Seated in the auditorium today are family and friends who have in many different ways supported these candidates to reach the goal represented by this ceremony. And on the platform are the college faculty and staff who've motivated, encouraged, and inspired these students as they completed their coursework and their college experience. And then before us are the candidates for graduation who've become good friends and mentors and colleagues, developing relationships that will serve them well as they move into the future together. We join then as members of an extended support network to celebrate our involvement with these candidates and to witness their accomplishment. And that celebration now begins. Presiding over the December commencement ceremony is the president of the Pennsylvania College of Technology, Dr. Davy Jane Gilmore. Good morning and welcome to the magnificent facility. This facility began life 85 years ago as the Capitol Theater and it just celebrated its 20th birthday as the Community Arts Center. Like you, a very important part of Penn College's story. And when this class of 2013 leaves today, its members too will claim a very unique place in our history. Legacy is on our minds these days as we count down to the 100th anniversary of this institution, one that has proudly founded the foundation for thousands upon thousands of graduates. It has been fun and enlightening to look back on where we've been, and in some ways, we've come full circle. In 1914, for instance, when we first offered adult education in a high school basement, the Model T Ford went into production. One of our newest majors, automotive restoration technology, gives our students access to a variety of vintage vehicles, including a visit this past March from, you guessed it, a Model T Ford. There have been many challenges in the 100 years, and we've held our own against the pounding tides of change, keeping up with technology and shifting demands in the workplace, the economic ebb and flow that must be managed in order to survive. Through conscientious stewardship, dedicated faculty and staff, and students like you who have honored our faith in them by earning the right to walk across this stage, we have grown into a national leader in applied technology education. It is those soon-to-be graduates that we now turn to this morning, joining their proud supporters in applauding their accomplishments. Your student speaker stands ready to ably represent you. The faculty members are on hand to enjoy your company one more time, and the rest of us are here to enjoy this singular moment in your history. So to the final class of 2013, sit back, relax, and enjoy this affirmation of your success. And to your families and friends, your frequent shoulders, your constant cheerleaders, we welcome you to this magnificent facility and this most important celebration. Now this is when we would normally tell you to please silence your cell phones, turn them off, no texting, etc., during the ceremony. But we are, in fact, a college of technology and I am a realist. So I'm going to ask you to silence the ringing because the songs would be a little much. But I am going to ask you to keep those Facebook posts and Twitter tweets going. It's hashtag PCT grads. We want to hear about what you think during the ceremony. <laughs> and we will be watching. So we want to hear what you say about Penn College today throughout the ceremony. And our ceremony now begins. I have a question for you. This is for the graduates. Did you have a favorite teacher while you were here? <laughs> Just about every one of us had a favorite teacher. And one of those women or men is probably sitting right behind me. Penn College is rightfully proud of our faculty. The women and men behind me represent the whole faculty today. And they will tell you that their most important duty here is to be an outstanding teacher. And that sets Penn College apart from other institutions. We as a college and a community expect excellence in the classroom and the laboratory. And that sets a high bar for all faculty. Yet many not only meet that challenge, but they surpass 
all of our expectations. Since 1982, Penn College has recognized the best of the faculty by presenting the Veronica M. Music Master Teacher Award. These faculty members are shining examples of what a Penn College education is about. These faculty members find ways to connect with students in a number of ways and to serve both students and the college. They are the best of an outstanding group. Our custom is to ask the master teacher to address a December graduating class, and it's my pleasure to introduce her. Dr. Jerry Luke, I believe I heard that name as a favorite teacher a moment ago. Dr. Jerry Luke is a professor of business administration and marketing. She came to Penn College in 2004 and brought with her an extraordinary level of professionalism and boundless energy. She's a graduate of the Salem State College, the University of Massachusetts Lowell, and received her doctorate from the University of Massachusetts. Her work at Penn College includes service as the chair of college council and sponsoring the Delta Mu Delta Business Honorary and, of course, extensive curriculum development. But most importantly, Jerry Luke teaches. One of Jerry's nominators said, when you go to one of Dr. Luke's classes, you better be prepared because there is no doubt about it, you will be participating in her class. Another said, Dr. Luke is kind of like a football coach pacing the sideline, fist, fist clenched, lovingly shouting for her players to make the right move. It doesn't take long to realize how passionate she is about her students succeeding in life. That's an excellent synopsis of an excellent teacher. It is my pleasure to present to you the 29th recipient of the Veronica Music Master Teacher Award, Dr. Jerry Luke. Thank you very much, Provost Starkey. Um, and thank you, Dr. Gilmore. And to the faculty and staff, faculty and friends, um, families and friends, but most especially to you graduates, thank you for giving me an opportunity to talk to you. If you were here in May, you well know how honored and surprised I was to receive this award. I saw it as a challenge. I would now have to actually live up to it. To you graduates, I know you're anxious to cross this stage and to receive that diploma and to then move on and out of this stage of your life. But the diploma, this piece of paper, is alone not going to solve all the complexities of your future. As I pondered what I would say here today, I wondered if you needed one more, more mature adult trying to instill you with his or her wisdom. And since I thought I knew how you might answer that, I considered to whom you might be more willing to listen. So I went out and did a little mini research project and I reached out to numerous individuals who sat right where you're sitting, graduates of Penn College over the last several years. I emailed them, connected via Facebook and LinkedIn, and I spoke directly with some. I asked them one question. If you had the opportunity to speak to new graduates, what one thing would you now tell them? I will tell you that not one of them told me one thing. Rather, they all responded with several things. I distilled what they said into very consistent themes that I kept hearing, and I'd like to communicate those five themes to you today. Of course, I did win the award, so I will end with a few words of wisdom from me. <laughs> First theme, connections. I kept hearing, network, connect, reach out. You are fully equipped to work in the field of fields in which you are educated. Take every opportunity to meet other professionals in your field. Don't be afraid to ask your professors. Ask them to introduce you to someone they know in their field. Talk to these new connections. Recognize also that your Penn College peers, those sitting right beside you, and those who have gone before you are also resources. Likewise, you are their resources. Use the technology to stay in touch. If you don't know LinkedIn, learn it and use it. Theme two, challenges and persistence. Persistence and hard work cannot be underestimated. As college students, one graduate said, we fall prey to the misconception that we will graduate and be handed the position we wanted in a job we love. That probably isn't going to happen. Experience is the key to landing a job, which immediately puts most of you at the bottom of the list. Don't let that get you down. It's the first challenge you have to overcome. Work hard. Don't feel entitled just because you have a degree. Finding a good job takes work. 
and even then you'll have to work your way up to where you want to be. No task, no matter how small or menial, is beneath you. Getting your foot in the door first is critical. It gets you the necessary experience that other employers want. If you work hard and prove yourself, promotion will come. Don't be afraid, however, to try new places once you get that first job. Do not get comfortable. Reach out for more. Push yourself out of your comfort zone. Half the joy is the challenge. Keep an open mind and do not let opportunities pass by, whether it's because it's not in your field or because it's outside of your comfort zone. Theme three, communication and respect. If you have a company or a position in mind, don't give up just because you don't meet the requirements of the job. Get an interview. Blow them away with your communication skills. Make an impression they can't, fall, they can't forget. Then follow up. Following up shows your drive, your passion. It also shows your responsibility. If you don't get the job, thank them and tell them to call you if something else comes along. If you made an impression, they will call you back. Once you get that job, be humble rather than demanding of others and ask more questions. Demanding or telling more experienced workers what to do gets you nowhere productive. But do not be afraid to step, step up and say something if it needs to be said. Theme four, continuous learning. Always be willing to learn. Don't feel you have to know everything in your field. If you don't know, say so. But say, I'll find out and I'll get back to you. Then do your research. People want you and they value you for your knowledge. Know you are a valuable resource, but never stop learning. Learn everything you can about the industry in which you want to work. Get every badge, certification, accreditation your company will allow, and attend every training and education se session that is relevant. Then go out and apply what you have learned. Your willingness to continue to learn will get the right people's attention. And finally, theme five, one that I called reflection. The real world will give you challenges you have never even dreamed of. It's going to make you question things and at times yourself. Ask yourself ahead of time, what is your expectation of yourself? What, is your, what do you expect yourself to do in this world? Don't take a job simply because of the money. Be confident that you will be happy in life not just in a job. Be sure that the place that you choose has opportunities to grow and to learn. The money will come with time. You each have a dream. No matter what happens, hold on to that dream and pursue it with passion and dedication. But when it comes down to it, no hurdle is greater than you yourself. The only thing that will keep you from achieving your dream is you. You are your own biggest hurdle. You hold the power to make your dreams come true. So whatever that dream is, follow it. Because when you do, when you achieve it, you're going to change the world. Remember, your goals will change as doors open and you grow and you learn professionally. If you have the opportunity, travel. It broadens your horizons. But whatever you do, have passion, not only for work, but have a passion for life. Your passion will shine through and lead you down a path of learning, growth, and success. And finally, one very wise graduate said, hold on tight. You think you know yourself? Not quite yet. It's just the beginning. I was real proud of these students as I listened to them. And over the past 10 years, I've had the privilege to teach and interact with many. As a result, I've managed to get to know some of you very well. Often when one graduates, one does think of a period in his or her life that has ended. Many of you did choose to enter school because of a desire to find a rewarding career or to seek economic fulfillment. What you have gained is, yes, enhanced career and economic opportunities, but also what I believe all graduates would say you have gained is a true sense of who you really are, a sense then of what you are capable of attaining. Is that an ending? Malcolm Knowles, a noted educator, depicted educated individuals as an embryonic social force of great potential, seeking to overcome the numerous obstacles that lie in their path towards self-fulfillment. And I've gotten to know enough of you to know 
that you are a social force, that you have great potential, that you will overcome all obstacles in your path to continuous learning and greater, le greater levels of self-fulfillment. But I have also recognized in you the embodiment of what an another educator suggested all education should be about. To paraphrase him, to me, you represent human beings in the process of continuously becoming. You have chosen to incorporate into your biographies current learning and experiences and thus have created new social beings. You have allowed yourself to be transitory, a manifestation of the now in the process of becoming, implying not only an improved future, but also a potential to continuously commit yourself to developing into something more than what already exists. That is not an ending. Nelson Mandela, a single man who changed the world, once said, education is the most powerful weapon which you can use to change the world. You have been armed with that weapon. It is a privilege. Use it wisely. To quote one grad, tomorrow's not guaranteed, and happiness is not so much a destination of life as it is the joy of the journey. A philosopher Voltaire once said, perfection is attained by slow degrees. It requires the hand of time. En enjoy the time that that journey will take, but never stop learning and growing. The world will be a better place as a result of your joy and the time you took. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Liu. I'd now like to introduce Mr. Elliot Strickland, Chief Student Affairs Officer. President Gilmore, Senator Yaw, Provost Starkey, distinguished faculty and staff, family, friends, and most importantly, the December 2013 graduating class. It is my great pleasure this morning to introduce your student commencement speaker. Now during our lifetimes, we meet hundreds and thousands of people. And if you're like me, you're lucky if you remember just a portion of them. But there are some people that you never forget. And I'm not sure what it is about them. It's their personality, it's the connection you make, it's something else. Eric Polanco is one of those people if you know if you've met Eric, and you will likely not forget him. Penn College certainly will not forget Eric. During his time here, he's done just about everything. He graduated from the Presidential Leadership Program. He guided prospective students as a student ambassador. He led incoming students as a Connections Link orientation leader. And he fostered their success as an on-campus on as a resident assistant. I would see Eric around campus in so many ways that I almost forgot his primary purpose for being here was his academic career. But not surprisingly, he led there as well. He interned at the Lycoming County Public Defender's Office. He was a member of the Paralegal Honor Society. He earned Dean's List recognition. And later this morning, Eric will graduate with his Bachelor of Science in Legal Assistant and Paralegal Studies. Earlier this morning, Eric was awarded the President's Award for Service and Leadership to the college. Eric's next step in life will take him to that one place, I think, matches his personality and potential, New York City. It's my great pleasure to introduce your 2013 student commencement speaker, Mr. Eric J. Polanco. Good morning, everyone. Well, so, good morning. So here we are. It is an honor to have been asked to speak here at commencement for the December 2013 graduating class of Penn College. The beauty of graduating today is that unlike in the spring, we have the opportunity to, to collect our diplomas while being surrounded by fellow classmates from all different majors and schools. In this room today, we represent the future from all different angles and all different walks of life and all different classrooms. 
There are so many people that I would like to thank that have helped me to get to this point in my life, but I'm not gonna go and ramble them off because we all do. Moms, dads, grandparents, sisters and brothers, husbands and wives, children, faculty members, the list could go on and on. All these people have helped us in our two to four year process, sometimes four and a half if you're like me. They have been there for us when we needed guidance and advice. They have been our emotional rocks and shoulders to cry on. They have been our compasses that have guided us in the right direction when we have questioned what we're doing here and where we want to be. And then sometimes they were our financial nets when we couldn't afford our cable bills or our groceries at Wegmans. Without their support, there is no doubt in my mind that the journey to this day would have been a substantially steeper uphill battle. The people in our life that we have looked to for support during our time here at Penn College deserve an unbelievable, unbelievable amount of credit. However, one person that deserves a great deal of credit as well is you. You should always remember that though you may have had help along the way to getting to this point, you are the main reason that you are sitting here. It is your hopes and dreams for the future that made you fill out that application however many years ago and come here to Penn College. It is your passion and love for what you do that made you spend countless nights studying up, staying up all night studying. It is your determination to succeed that made you get up on Friday mornings for your 8 a.m. classes after spending the previous night at Kimball's. No matter what your passion is, no matter what drives you to keep on going, just remember that you are the reason that you're here today. You are the reason that you're in the seats. The other day I had a thought. Where would I be if I had never came here to Penn College? Would I be the same person that I am today without meeting the people that I did and forming the lifelong friendships and bonds that I did? The experiences that you have had here are the ones that opened you up to something new and unfamiliar. They have made you question who you are and what you want to do with your life. They have taken you somewhere unexpected and far from where you started on your very first day here. Those experiences all accumulate to this moment. For in this very moment, you are in that same unfamiliar place, except now you are even more prepared to enter into the next chapter of your life. Remember that you do not get an unlimited amount of time in your life. Always be looking where you want to go next, and always be a first-rate version of yourself instead of a second-rate version of anybody else. A professor once told me, Always be kinder than necessary, for everyone you meet in life is, is dealing with some kind of personal battle. Take that quote and apply it to your degree as you enter to the workforce, and apply it every day. Be yourself and be kind. Though they may seem like simple qualities, they can get you a lot farther sometimes than any piece of paper. The degrees that each of us are receiving are not the golden ticket to our success, though we really wish we would after all the work we put in. The degree that you're receiving today and the, experiences, and the experiences that you have had here are only a snapshot of your life. It is how you mold and frame that snapshot that determines how far you will go. We have already achieved so much just by sitting in this room today and by walking across this stage later on, but you always have to remember that life won't wait. You have to continue to believe in yourself and you will be, you will be able to go that much farther. Congratulations, graduates. Make sure to make this day one that deserves to stand as the end of your last chapter here at Penn College. Thank you. The Alumni Achievement Award recognizes an alumnus or an alumna of the Pennsylvania College of Technology from the past 10 years whose postgraduate life includes noteworthy professional accomplishments or dedicated volunteer service to the college and community, one who has demonstrated the importance of his or her Penn College education and who continually supports the institution's mission. This year, we honor Army Captain Scott M. Frederick. He earned a bachelor's degree in welding and fabrication engineering technology in 2004 and is on track to receive his Master's of Professional Studies degree in Security and Safety Leadership from the George Washington University this April. 
I quote, during Scott's time at Penn College, he not only excelled academically, but in his role as a student leader, wrote his nominator. While Scott was very involved on campus, he made his mark as the student who began Greek life on our campus. He was a founder and first president of the Muse I chapter of the Phi Mu Delta, the college's first social fraternity, and he was instrumental in the creation of an extremely active alumni chapter on campus. The night before his May 2004 graduation, Scott was commissioned into the U.S. Army as a second lieutenant after completing the ROTC program at Penn College. I will be candid with you, that was a particularly momentous occasion for me because it was the first commissioning ceremony of my presidency. I quote this comment, as a cadet, he consistently rose to the top of his class. His former commander of the Bison Battalion, which comprises Penn College and four other institutions, says he was lauded by his instructors as a take charge student who could effortlessly develop plans and implement them with minimal guidance. He's always had a full plate, yet effectively he managed his time, and I knew upon his graduation and commissioning that he'd be a very successful Army officer. That prediction was borne out through the Army's recognition of leadership skills that Scott honed at Penn College. He has been deployed three times, twice to Iraq and once to Afghanistan. And in his service to those nations as well as his own country, both are commendable. Among the decorations he's received, way too many to mention. He was awarded the Bronze Star for his work in support of Iraq's first free elections. He was the police transition team chief in Baghdad, and he mentored seven, 700 new Iraqi police officers who provided security during the voting process. More notably, in that process, with the entire world watching, he was solely responsible for overseeing the safe transport of every single ballot from that election from the Baghdad International Airport to a warehouse. He was in charge of recruiting, interviewing, and training more than 7,500 Sons of Iraq, a coalition of tribal sheikhs that united to maintain security in their providential, provincial communities. He was a distinguished honor graduate from the Military Officer Basic Course, the MP Captain's Career Course, and among other, many other educational achievements, he has completed Airborne School, Air Assault School, and Ranger School. He has served as a platoon leader, a law and order, order operations officer, and a company commander. He is currently an instructor in Fort Leonard Wood, responsible for the professional development of more than 150 newly commissioned lieutenants annually. In the spring, he will move to Washington, D.C. for an interagency fellowship with the Department of Homeland Security and the U.S. Marshals Service. As you will see and hear later, we hold a very special place for the active and veteran servicemen and women among our student body, our alumni, our faculty, and our staff. We are grateful as well for the credible and respectable way in which today's recipient has represented Penn College to the community, both locally and on the global stage. The nominator writes, and I could not agree more, I am not sure I have ever been more proud of an alumnus as I am of what Scott has accomplished since leaving Penn College. Please join me in honoring Captain Scott M. Frederick, our 2013 Alumni Achievement Award winner. I know that I'm the only thing standing between you right now uh, and your diplomas, so I have promised to make this sort of short one page. Okay. <laughs> Dr. Gilmore, faculty, uh, uh, graduates and their families. Um, I, you know, throughout the, the, the course of your time here, you know you've developed yourselves, but I want to talk about the next chapter in life. Success in your careers is not completely about you. Moreover, the actions and successes of those around you as a child, you develop your ideologies from your, friend, from your parents and friends, uh, and then college molded you at the hand of your professors and peers. And as a professional, your future success will depend on those who mold you and those you mold around you. Everything that I have done in the Army somehow benefits the organization 
and that is the mindset that you need to have to be successful. And the Army and officer is told that the success and failures of the organization are your responsibility. And everything that does and does not happen is your responsibility, and the same is true in the corporate world. Take ownership, take responsibility, and be loyal to what you have decided to do in life. Roadblocks should only be diversions. Greek life on this campus is a testament of 12 men who did not stop at a roadblock, but instead have found a new way and kept pursuing. This institution is a vehicle that catapults you into success. It is now up to you to take what has been given to you and use that knowledge to leverage your own success. I have the privilege of serving with officers who are from colleges such as West Point, Harvard, and Princeton. And one thing that I am certain of is that the education that you received at Penn College is just as good or better than of those because of the professional applications uh, that have been incorporated in your instruction. Be proud of who you are. Be proud to be a future alumnus of Penn College. I want to thank Elliot and Kel Carolyn Strickland for giving me and the other men and women of Penn College a chance to broaden our leadership attributes. Dr. Gilmore, thank you for being open to change and taking the chance of allowing the men and women of Greek life to enhance their learning experience. To my family and my friends, those soldiers, non-commissioned officers, commissioned officers that have made me success successful, and especially my father, I thank you. The biggest thank you goes to Penn College. Everyone at this college is committed to the excellence and development, and without those uh, who have gotten both of you and I to this point, uh, we will not be where we are as successful as we are today. Again, take pride in who you are and where you come from. Congratulations and good luck in your future endeavors. Ladies and gentlemen, as many of you know, the legal corporate body of the Pennsylvania College of Technology is its board of directors. This is the body that, by our charter, is given final responsibility for the governance, welfare, and all other interests of the, pertaining to the college. Though some responsibilities are delegated, the ultimate authority rests with the board. At this time, I would like to call upon Senator Jean Yaw, chair of the board of directors, to authorize the conferring of degrees at this ceremony. Senator Yaw. Good morning. This is a very special occasion for all of you. The degrees being awarded have come from hard work, from the guidance and wisdom of the faculty, and from strong support from your family and friends. On behalf of the Board of Directors, I extend to all of the graduates our congratulations and best wishes and to all of the supporting family members, the faculty, and friends, I extend our thanks for your support. Now I turn to my official duties. Dr. Gilmore, by virtue of the authority vested in the Board of Directors of the Pennsylvania College of Technology, I authorize you, on behalf of the Board, to confer on each of these candidates the degree earned as certified by the appropriate school dean. So how's the tweeting and the Facebook posting going? Okay, I'm, I'm gonna check, because you know, I'm gonna do it too, so. Will the candidates for the Bachelor of Science degree please rise? Dr. Gilmore, upon recommendation of the faculty, I'm pleased to inform you that these women and men have satisfactorily completed the requirements for the Bachelor of Science degree. By virtue of the authority vested in me by the Board of Directors of the Pennsylvania College of Technology, I do hereby confer upon you the Bachelors of Science degrees that you have earned with all the rights and privileges and with congratulations from the Board of Directors, the faculty, the administration. Congratulations. You may be seated. Will the candidates for all associate degrees and certificates please rise? Dr. Gilmore, upon recommendation of the faculty, I'm pleased to inform you that these men and women have satisfactorily completed the requirements of their respective associate degrees and certificates. 
by virtue of the authority vested in me by the Board of Directors of the Pennsylvania College of Technology. I do hereby confer upon you the associate degrees and certificates that you have earned with all the rights and privileges and with congratulations from the Board of Directors, the administration, and the faculty. Congratulations. Now, would you stay standing and would the baccalaureate graduates please rise? And Eric, you can come over. Ladies and gentlemen, a little bit ago, you entered this theater as candidates for the certificates and degrees that we have just awarded. That was my honor, and I now will take you through the next step of the process. As a symbol of your entry into the world of educated women and men, I ask you to join me as I turn the graduation tassel of your class representative. This will symbolize to the world that you are, in fact, now a graduate of the Pennsylvania College of Technology. Congratulations. You may be seated. As individuals and institutions, we all pass through clear stages of development, points in time when we grow in new roles and new responsibilities. This is a transition ceremony for all of the graduates. Today, we will recognize individuals with academic honors. Outstanding academic achievement will be recognized for all students participating. The gold, silver, or white cord that they wear today will identify the honor graduates. White for honors, silver for high honors, and gold for highest honors will identify those students. Blue cords will signify academic achievement for certificate students. And in addition, we are very proud to recognize the graduates who are members of Phi Theta Kappa. Their gold stoles and gold tassels will identify them. And we also proudly recognize the graduates of the Alpha Chi Honor Society and white stoles will identify those students. I would now like to ask the veterans identified by their red, white, and blue cords who are graduating, who have served in active duty as well as serving in all branches of the military to please stand. And I know we have veteran graduates today. Please stand. I'd like to tell you about our Penn College veterans, and you can stay standing while I talk. We are very proud of our veteran students. Currently attending Penn College, we have five recipients of Purple Hearts. We have four Bronze Star recipients. We have 80 Iraq Campaign Medal winners or awards, and we have 32 Afghanistan Campaign Medalists. We are very proud of our veterans, and congratulations. You may be seated. They waited to be told, you can tell. You can tell. The most bittersweet part of any commencement ceremony is saying goodbye to the students who come into our lives, often teaching the us as much as we teach them. Some of them make their presence known in obvious ways. Others touch us far more subtly. For the most part, we're a launching pad from which they soar spectacularly into the world. They return from time to time, as Scott did, and inspire us all. Occasionally, one departs us more permanently, leaving us with a very empty heart and the sadness of unrealized potential. In mid-September, as he began his last courses in ornamental horticulture, plant production emphasis, we lost Christopher Ginter. There's little we can say to adequately console his family and friends in this unfathomable loss of a lifetime. But we can pause to mark his passing and to let them know that we share in their grief. One of his horticulture instructors recalls how much Chris loved plants. He loved growing them. He loved taking care of them. He expressed his desire to work with them in a lab, perhaps as a plant scientist. The faculty member said, Chris was a thinker. You could feel it when he asked you a question in class. He wanted to know more about what you were teaching. 
And once you got him talking about plants, you could feel his passion. The instructor recalled that Christopher was nicknamed Gator early in his time at Penn College. That was stemming from the classmates' confusion over how to pronounce his last name, because I'm told that Gator is the last thing that he was. Chris was a mild-mannered, he had a great sense of humor, and that was really appreciated by his classmates. He had a wonderful willingness to get involved. We might always question why he left this world at such a young age, giving us only a hint of what he'd become. But one thing we do know is that he was loved and he was appreciated while he was with us, and that his spirit lives on with his family and his friends and the plants that he loved and nurtured. Our Penn College family joins today with the Ginters as we present Christopher's associate degree as a member of the graduating class, a reward for his hard work, his dedication, and his abidingly generous spirit. I just want to thank everybody from the school for being so kind and to us and we're proud to accept this for Christopher. We love you. At this time, Mrs. Carolyn Strickland, the Assistant Vice President for Academic S Services, and the respective school representatives will present the candidates. Senator Yaw will assist me in presenting the diplomas. Now, this is the part you're all ready for. And this, I know that. And this is the part where the tweeting and stuff is gonna get a lot more exciting, I have a feeling. But I have just a couple of requests. The area right in front of us, we have open for, for our official photographers, but otherwise, you're all welcome to come down and take pictures. Just try to keep our area open so we can go on with the procession and everybody can capture the moment because we know it's special. And with that, I think we're ready to begin. President Gilmore, I present the graduates from the School of Business and Hospitality. Thank you. Terry Allen Lenig. Anthony James Pertazio. Justine Erica Cubberly. Christy L. Wright. Jonathan Andrew Backus. His name's Dirk. 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 Zachary David Robert Dirk. Shannon L. Barr. Corinna R. Courtright. Brandy L. Davis. Ashley, 
Ashley Aaron Gensel. Jessica Murphy Kaiser. Lauren Charlotte Rich. Lauren Christy Yerk. Craig T. Capista. Joseph Robert Grzuski. Kyle L. Madison. Jordan R. Starrett. Joseph Michael Trainer. Wyatt James Decker. Shane Matthew Engel. Holly Marie Raybuck. Paul Alexander McGinn. Blair Mackenzie Neal. Alex James Howe. Kelly L. Manival. Brent Rosenberg. Ryan M. Enders. Christian Javier Francisco. Adam Craig Grzleski. Daniel Hugh Rummel. Addison Tucker Shableski. Carly Nicole Kambik. Benjamin W. Kerstetter. Brad E. Pavlosky. Dace J. Landis. Robert Matthew Long, Jr. Jessica Wool Farnsworth. President Gilmore, I proudly present the graduates from the School of Construction and Design Technologies. Gerard Michael Buckley III. Cody Austin Sollenberger. Michael V. Tusi. Kiana Lynn Funk. Daniel Timothy Krager. Nicholas Andrew Marshall. Ashley Nicole Simpson. Sean C. Whitehouse. Andre M. Hayes. Cameron Tyler Patch. Kyler Wayne Thomas. Kyle J. Williams. Ralph Thomas Darone the fourth. Nicholas David Massimilla. 
Reinert. 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 Yeah. Derek Angus Reinert. Yeah. Jason R. Stewart. Seth C. Swigard. Brunage. Brunage. Chad A. Brunage. <laughs> David Michael Boozel. Timothy B. Brightigan. Ethan G. Yawkey. Brian James Baker. Joshua Cole Briner. Zachary David Labar. Neil Quinn McEnany. Matthew Clark Sweeley. Cody Charles Tadero. President Gilmore, I present the graduates of the School of Health Sciences. Alicia Janelle Beerley. Kayla Diane Fadley. Emily Catherine Federoff. Jessica Marie Hoffman. Ashley Marie Lynch. Cleopatra Moses. Lynn Darlene Moyer. Tara Michelle Powell. Katie Nicole Reitbauer. Rachel Marie Wallace. Amanda A. Alana. Brianna Renee Wieland. James J. Jimenez, Jr. Adam Douglas Musgrove. President Gilmore, I present the graduates for the School of Industrial Computing and Engineering Technologies. Zachary A. Grenoble. Zuina Amacardo. <laughs> Jesse D. Gagnon. <laughs> Arthur L. Counterman, Jr. <laughs> Nicholas C. DeLeon. Corey M. Goss. Sneeringer. Daniel Adam Sneeringer. Jason M. Beck. Stephen John Economus. Christopher Richard McCabe. Joshua Ryan Panzarella. Giovanni Norberto Rosario.
Adam John Becker. Isaac L. Harris. Stephen M. Carney. Joshua J. Kingsbury. Dennis James Boop, Jr. Jared Warren Fontaine. Brett Michael Kalp. Nicholas Alexander Berger. Ryan Eugene Swingle. Daffer Algatani. Hassan Al Bashiri. Hassan Al Bashiri. Hassan Al Bashiri. Patrick John Core Jr. Mark Daniel Davis. Shane Patrick Dunlap. Anthony Edward Gatto. David James Munn. Obrick. Morgan A. Obrick. Adam James Steppy. Eric L. Clark. Logan C. Marshall. Joshua Allen McCool. Leo J. Maroli III. Ethan Michael Raleigh. Kevin M. Sherry. Scully. William Scully Sweeney. President Gilmore, I present the graduates from the School of Sciences, Humanities, and Visual Communications. Jason David Matula. Christopher J. Cosgrove. Daniel I. Henriksen. Jeffrey Thomas Feeman. Arthur Lee Drummond. Megan Danielle McBrien. Malcolm Daniel Sasse. Rachel Amanda Hill. Sarah Ann Balsley. Christina A. Glace. Helen Jeanette Herrer. Nichelle Marie Hofford. Victoria M. Lobsher. 
Jennifer A. Lohman. Aubrey Lynn Soans. Jernay A. Drummond. Holly Marie Raymond. Deshonda K. Robinson. Michelle Catherine Runkle. Stephanie Nicole Keefreiter. Elizabeth Ann Kepler. Drew A. Nielsen. President Gilmore, I present the graduates of the School of Transportation and Natural Resources Technologies. Stephen M. Armstrong. Braden T. Connor. Aaron M. McCullough. Timothy Stanley Rawlins. Justin Thomas Smith. Kyle G. Wagner. Daniel Thomas Wright. Richard Matthew Hawes. Taylor Roman Horetsky. James Rowan Heller. Cody Martin Brown. Michael P. Guthrie. Ziegler. 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 Scott M. Ziegler. Jacob Richard Cook. Brandon M. Maletta. Karsh Michael Miller. Dylan Andrew Widener. Darcy Don Litzelman III. Wade Scott Truitt. Zachary L. Yetter. Colin Patrick Mayo. Cody A. Riley. and Eric J. Polanco. Your connection to the college does not end today. As graduates, you are now members of the Penn College Alumni Association, and that's the link between you and your alma mater. I encourage you to keep in touch with alumni relations. You will hear from us monthly via our alumni online newsletter, as well as, of course, Facebook. I look forward to welcoming you back to campus to keep your contact information up to date. It's important that we know how well you're doing in the world, and as you've heard from all of the speakers today, how you are changing the world in which we live. In about six months, you're going to get a graduation survey, and that's really important to us to learn where you are and what you're doing and how you're advancing the careers and the degrees that work. 
that you are taking with you today. I want to thank you in advance for helping us with that survey and for most importantly keeping in touch with us. You know, a lot of the excitement has passed. We will vote this family and friends crowd as one of the most energetic we've had at commencement in a long time. <laughs> Graduates, you missed a lot of it. And I get the opportunity on behalf of all of these distinguished faculty behind me to be the last person to share a few thoughts with you. And I more than any of you know that you're ready to go, so I promise that I'll be brief. But for the next two minutes, I want you to imagine that it's just me and you, so that we can just have a couple of minutes. It's my honor to be the last person to speak with you today before you go out in the world. We talk about degrees that work, and we talk about the degree that you earned today and it will represent you and the transition that you're about to make. It's overwhelming, I know that, and I'm supposed to ease your anxiety and your excitement, and I'm supposed to give you words of wisdom. It's always a challenge to follow your class representative and then to follow Dr. Luke, not to mention the inspiration that you've gotten from all these fine people behind me. So I'm going to borrow some of my remarks from some recent movies, and I'm going to start with the life of Pi. All life is an act of letting go. I want you to think about that for a minute. When we're young, we shed our training wheels. We wave goodbye to our parents or our loved ones on the first day of kindergarten. And we say so long to adolescence when we leave high school. And for some of you, that wasn't too terribly long ago. And very soon this weekend, or maybe in the coming months, you're going to take that job and walk into a new set of place. And really, if you will, the metaphor of training wheels will start over again. In addition to letting go, though, there's what I think about is grabbing a hold, embracing something new, even if you're building on something that came before. New friends, new challenges, new opportunities, and a new you. In a few, for these few minutes, I want you to focus on just you. Not in a selfish way, in which you pop your earbuds and shut out the rest of the world, but in a way to recognize what you have accomplished. Only one third of the people in the United States of America, fewer than 7% of the world's population, get a college degree. You just joined that group, and that makes you very special. I want you to take the time to shout about that today. I want you to look at the classmates beside you and the faculty behind me and the loving, loyal, and friends that got you here. And remember, you joined in a very elite group of people today. Your achievement carries with it great personal satisfaction, but it does come with responsibility. As we near the centennial of this institution, a hundred years since we first started to make a difference with students, the world has changed a lot. I will tell you, the world has changed a lot since I was a college student. But in many, many ways, some of the things that matter the most have not changed at all. Family, friends, education, good deeds, and quality of work are no less important today than they were many years ago for me. While we have given you the specific tools that you need to shine in your field, you have also nurtured the rest of you at Penn College, sharing your life skills from ethics to time management to healthy relationships and stress relief to help you maintain your focus. And now what I wish for you. I wish for you strength, poise, and bravery as you weather the difficult, life-altering choices that lie ahead of you. May the decisions that you make, the decisions for which all of us in this auditorium have prepared you, allow you to become the best of whomever you are. This is your moment. Embrace it, transcend it, and let us know what happens next. I want you to cherish the fellowship of those with who've come before you. With their guidance, you too will be a distinguished alumni and an inspiring mentor as we begin 
our second hundred years. So right now, I say to you this. Thank you for being part of our lives. And now go out in the world and make a difference. And most of all, make us Penn College proud. Congratulations. I invite those who are able to stand. Gentlemen, please remove your caps and everyone to join in the singing of the Penn College alma mater. The words may be found on page two of your program. <laughs> 